I'm sure you must have heard headlines like glacier melts the size of Rome or ice sheet the size of Los Angeles is about to collapse. Now these headlines are not meant to be terrifying. The goal is to make climate change relatable. But I have to say, it doesn't always work for me. Imagining the size of New York, which I frankly can't visualize, to understand how climate change is hitting some desolate part of Antarctica doesn't quite help me connect all the dots. So allow me to try another way. In this video, I take one instance of global warming and take you on a journey of how it causes climate change across the planet in different ways till it hits home. It's a much needed reality check, so let's talk about it. In the previous episode of Net Earth, I explained the difference between global warming and climate change and how they are related. If those are basics you want to get right, please click on the link that's popping up on your screen now. We talked about how the Arctic is warming six times faster than average due to global warming. That's because the ice caps are melting faster, causing them to turn black, which absorbs more heat than white and accelerates melting. This pushes more water into the seas and oceans. By the way, at the same time, oceans are also getting hotter. Ocean temperatures hit record heat levels last year. This means that our giant oceans are literally expanding in volume and melting even more glaciers and ice sheets around them, besides the one that are melting on their own. Net-net, a record high rise in sea levels also in 2021, the two largest sources being ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. It's hard to see sea levels rise, so it's easy to think that it's not happening. In many ways, the central paradox of the climate crisis. But thanks to satellite and tide gauge data, we know that average sea levels have swelled over 8 inches since 1880, with about 3 of those inches gained in the last 25 years. NASA has visual proof that between 2002 and 2017, over 5,600 gigatons of ice were lost in Greenland and Antarctica, when 99% of the world's freshwater ice is located. This has translated as coastal erosion, eating into homes and agricultural land, coastal and island nations sinking, and seawater polluting essential groundwater sources. We're already seeing this in many places, including the Sundarbans in India, where rising seas have eaten into 50 km square of forest area, and Indonesia, which is literally packing up and moving its entire capital from Jakarta, overcrowded, polluted, and quickly sinking. But it's not just that the sea levels are rising. Because of global warming, sea salinity is increasing. That is, the seas are actually getting saltier in places. This affects the density of seawater, which disrupts the currents. Currents which regulate heat throughout the oceans and therefore our globe's entire climate. Saltier water also dictates how much fresh water enters and leaves our water cycle, which when combined with sea level rise, is just bad news. Entire rainfall patterns are shifting. Take just America. While the West is getting drier, the Midwest and Northeast have recorded sharp spikes in precipitation. Droughts are getting more frequent and dry like the one currently stretching on in East Africa. North India is no stranger to the kind of heat waves that are in store for us. Neither is Pakistan, nor, to everyone's surprise, Canada and California. Flash floods are getting more destructive, like the ones that swept through mountain towns in Europe and inundated subway stations in China and US last year, or the ones that hit Assam and Kerala each year. Cyclones, storms, typhoons, all naturally occurring, are getting worse as they cross superheated ocean surfaces and get charged before they make landfalls. Again, don't have to look too far for examples. Typhoon Rai killed over 400 people in the Philippines and Hurricane Ida caused an estimated $74 billion in damages in the US in 2021. Extreme weather events like these, as you can imagine, are a death blow to agricultural stability and food and water insecurity. Severe heat waves in northwestern India in May 2022 destroyed 
wheat crops en masse, prompting the government to ban its export and hurting other countries that are dependent on India's wheat surplus. So in a rather long winded way, ice caps melting in the Arctic are directly related to wheat prices in India in May 2022, almost as if it's happening on the same planet. In all, scientists are tracking 54 climate change variables from rain to lightning, to permafrost, to soil moisture, to ocean currents, nutrients, habitats, and more. They're also tracking land cover, which documents our addiction to cutting down forests, soil carbon that takes a hit every time we make a mountain of trash on it, and aerosols, the reason why India led the global tally for premature deaths due to air pollution in 2019. All of the above falls under the broad umbrella of climate change, all connected, all happening. But something else is also happening. The youth, teenagers, people in their 20s, they've begun very strongly identifying as the climate generation because they understand that should the worst of climate change hit, it is their adult lives and their children's lives that will be impacted. I want to end by highlighting the example of 18-year-old Sofia Kiani from America. She is in the business of communicating the climate crisis effectively. Founder of a youth-led non-profit called Climate Cardinals, they translate climate information into the native language of those who don't speak English. With the help of over 6,000 volunteers, they have worked in over 40 countries and helped 350,000 people understand climate change in a way that is relatable to them. In India, they have translated key climate change resources into Hindi, Gujarati and Kashmiri till now. Now that is impact, the kind that will help us meet the challenge of climate change. Next week, I'll look at this concept of net zero that keeps coming up in the news. What exactly is it? How does it work? Why is it so political? And how close are we to achieving this target? In many ways, net zero is the most important climate action goal, which if we achieve in the near future, could set us on the right path of building back this planet of ours. So let's talk about it.